Hey, welcome back. Today I made coffee cake, but there's weed in it. This recipe was adapted from Preppy Kitchen, so I'll leave his link in the description if you want to check that out. And today I'm going to show you how I made seven coffee cakes with about 30 milligrams each. I started off by weighing out my weed. I was going for about 210 milligrams total, and here's the equation I use for dosing. Then I set my oven to 240, and while it preheats, I'll start breaking up my weed. I'm just breaking the nugs into smaller pieces. I don't like to grind it because the weed flavor comes through a lot more in the final butter if you do. Then I'll put that in the oven for about 35 minutes, and while it's decarbing, I start melting my butter. I'm adding 7 tablespoons of butter and half a cup of water to a saucepan and melting that on a very low heat. I want it to melt but not too quickly. I like the temperature to be sitting at around 185 to 200 degrees before I add in my decarbed weed. When my weed is finished decarbing, I'll add it into the butter and give that a stir. I'm going to cook this for about two and a half hours, stirring every 30 minutes or so and checking regularly to make sure my temperature is staying in that 185 to 200 degree range. When my butter is finished cooking, I'll just pour it into a glass container using a strainer to get out all of the weed. You can already see that layer of butter starting to form on top of the water, but I like to put a lid on mine and put it in the fridge to help that butter solidify a little bit quicker. After about an hour, you can see the butter has solidified on top of the water. I just grab a knife to break that top layer and take the pieces of butter out of there. I always weigh my butter at the end to see how much I came out with and to see if I need to add a little bit more regular butter to the recipe. This time I did need to to get back to my original 7 tablespoons. While my butter softens, I'm going to make the cinnamon filling. So I'm taking a fourth cup of brown sugar, one and a half tablespoons of flour, and one teaspoon of cinnamon, and mixing that together. When that is finished, I'll set it aside and start working on the crumble for the top of the cake. So I'm adding a fourth of a cup of flour, two tablespoons of brown sugar, and one teaspoon of cinnamon and mixing that together really well until it's really thoroughly combined before adding in a tablespoon of melted butter. Then we'll just mix that all together with a fork and you want to kind of mix and fluff and mash out any lumps that are too big but you want to make sure that you're kind of keeping it a nice coarse crumbly mixture like this. I'll set that to the side as well and get out my softened butter. I'm grabbing a whisk and mixing this so that that can of butter is evenly dispersed throughout the regular butter, but also so that it's creamed until it's light and fluffy. Then I'll add in a fourth of a cup of brown sugar and a half of a cup of white sugar and mix that together until it's fully combined. Then I'll add in one egg and one egg yolk, one teaspoon of vanilla, and half of a cup of sour cream and whisk that as well. Then I'll get started on my dry ingredients. I'm adding two tablespoons of cornstarch, one and one fourth teaspoon of baking powder, and a half of a teaspoon of salt and whisking that together. Next, I'm switching to a spatula to add in my one cup plus two tablespoons of flour. I'm just gonna gently mix this or kind of fold it into the batter. I don't wanna over mix this, so do it until it's just incorporated. And you can see that at the end, it turns into this really nice thick batter. Next, I'll get my baking pan ready. You can see I greased the pan and put parchment paper in it. That was just to make it a little bit easier to get out. And I don't like to make eight of them. I only like to do seven because when I did eight, they came out a little bit smaller than I wanted. So I'm just doing a little dollop of batter into each of the bottom of these cavities. This is just gonna be our first layer. So once I have finished doing all of those dollops, I'm gonna use my spatula to kind of flatten out the batter into the layer and kind of spread it out throughout the pan. 
When all of those first layers are spread out, I grab the cinnamon filling from earlier and sprinkle that on top. I'm going to try to use all of it and try to get it into all of the corners and crevices, but I do like to give it a little shake at the end just to get a good even layer. Then we'll top that off with another layer of batter and spread that out with our spatula again. It is a little bit harder to spread over that cinnamon sugar layer just because it tries to kind of peel up the cinnamon sugar while you're spreading it, but just kind of pat it into the corners and spread it out as best you can. The final step is to add our layer of crumble to the top, so I'm just sprinkling that on as evenly as I can, and make sure you use all of it because this is the good part. Then we'll bake this at 350 for 20 to 22 minutes or until they're just golden on top and you can put a toothpick in and remove it cleanly. Once they've cooled down a little, you can remove them from the pan and that is it. They're ready to go. They are so great and like I said, they should be about 30 milligrams each, but with homemade edibles, it is hard to tell. So just eat half if you need to and keep in mind, it can take two to three hours for edibles to fully kick in. Let me know what you thought of this video in the comments, and if you try making these at home, I would love to see pictures. You can find me on Instagram, and as always, thank y'all so much for watching.